Hey, I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and I'm going to show you how to play Age of Innovation. This is a game for one to five players, it plays in about 200 minutes, is designed by Helder Ostertag and is published by Capstone Games and Furyland Spiel. Players play as a race with a special ability and a preferred terrain type. They are terraform, build and spread across the land while gathering knowledge, making innovations, acquiring competencies and advancing in sciences to gain the most points and win the game. Like, share and subscribe, let's just get on with this one. But before I start set up, there are three quick things. Firstly, I won't be covering the solo rules, this video is going to be long enough as it is. Secondly, for the same reason, I won't go over the few simple changes to the two player game shown on page 19. Thirdly and finally, if you're already familiar with Terra Mystica, you only need to read the six highlighted sections of the rulebook and you're good to go. And to help you with that, I'll I'll list those six sections with their own timestamps in the description below. Okay, now we're on to set up and place the board in the middle of the table. One side is for three to five players and the other side is one to three players and this side will provide a greater challenge when playing a three player game. Shuffle the 12 round scoring tiles and put them in their spaces on the left of the board from round six down to round one. This tile with a spade on the left cannot be in slot five or six as shown by the little graphic on the tile itself. Just shuffle the tiles and redraw it if it would go into slot 5 or 6. Also, you can't have all the tiles of the same discipline shown with the icons in the middle in rounds 1 to 5. If you would draw the third one, simply discard it and redraw. Finally, add the final round score tile over the right side of the round 6 tile. But if the building on the score tile matches the building on the round 6 tile, redraw the score tile, return the rest of all of these tiles to the box. Mix the 6 book action tiles. Place 3 at random face up in the spaces on the bottom of the board and return the rest of these to the box. Place the turn order board and science display next to the main game board. Place the innovation display next to the game board for the player count. This board goes on top for all games. Choose the side for the player count shown in the middle of it. One side has two four players, the other for three and five. The other two boards are single sided and will be added depending on the player count. In a two and three player game, simply place the large board underneath the first board and you're done. In a four to five player game, add the middle board in first. All of these layouts are shown on page four of the rule book. There are 48 competency tiles, Take the 12 starter tiles, the one with a more prominent icon. Put one of each randomly on the 12 spaces at the bottom of the innovation display. Place the other matching innovation tiles on top, making 12 powers of four identical tiles. Shuffle the 12 blue backed innovation tiles, put one on each of the six to 12 remaining spaces at the top of the innovation display, and return unused tiles to the box. Put the red back palace tile next to the board face up. Shuffle the rest, place one more tile per player, plus one next to it, so you should have two more than the player count and return the rest of these tiles to the box. Put the neutral buildings, coins, X tokens, tools, terrain tiles and book tokens into piles. Stack the city tiles into seven piles of three identical tiles. Lay out the seven planning display cards. Each one of these gives a starting bonus and or in-game ability and would decide which terrain will be the player's native terrain. Put a random faction tile next to each of these. These give a player a starting bonus and most of them also give the player their own special ability and or action. Put a random bonus tile next to each pair. Each one of these gives an additional round income and or ability for the current round. Put the three remaining bonus tiles next to the game board and put a coin on each. Choose a random start player. In reverse turn order, players choose a set of three of these cards and tiles. Players take the planning display matching their planning display card, shown by the terrain on the planning display card and the terrain at the top of the terraforming circle. They also take the buildings of the colour matching the native terrain. Return all unused planning display cards, planning displays and faction tiles to the box. These can instead be drafted. There are rules for this at the bottom of page 18. Place the buildings within their space on the planning display. Put a placeholder tile next to the palace to hold it in place. Place the track markers on the bottom of the sailing and terraforming tracks. Put 12 power tokens in the bowls as shown on the planning display. It will show how many you place in bowls 1 and 2. Keep the scholars and bridges nearby. Players place a status marker at the bottom of each discipline track. Place another status marker at 20 points. Place the turn order marker and the turn order track with the start player on top under round 1. Players take the resources as shown at the top right of the faction tile and planning display. For example, with this combination of swamp felines, they will gain 1 scholar, 3 tools and 15 coins. They will also move up one space on the yellow banking track and once on the white medicine track. So let's have a look at the science display and how that works. For each symbol, move up one space on the relevant track on the science display. When passing numbers 3, 5, 7 and 12, gain the amount of power shown, more on gaining power later in the video. Also, more on forming a sitter later, but you need to have formed a city to gain a key to pass level 7. At level 9 or higher, the spaces will provide additional income, more on income very shortly. 
finally, only one marker can get to level 12 on each track. To finish setup, players place their leftmost workshop from their board onto any one of their native terrain spaces on the board in turn order. Then each player will repeat this in reverse turn order, so the final player in turn order will place two workshops in a row. On to gameplay, which is played over six rounds of three phases. Income, actions, and science bonus, and preparation for the next round. For income, players gain anything uncovered they have that looks like this, shown over an open hand. These could be on the planning display, on the player's round bonus, tile, and anything else they have. For tools and coins, gain that many tools and coins. These are unlimited in the supply. For scholars, gain a scholar into your available supply. These are limited. For points, score that many points. For books, gain a book. A grey book refers to a book of any colour. This symbol is to move one space up on any science track. The power shown with the white arrow, gain that much power. Let's look at how you gain power. When gaining power, first move power from bowl 1 to bowl 2, and then only if bowl 1 is empty, move from bowl 2 to bowl 3. For example, if this player gained 4 power, they would first move 3 from bowl 1 to bowl 2. Now bowl 1 is empty, they can gain their 4th power by moving 1 power from bowl 2 to bowl 3. And once all players have gained their income, we go to phase two, which is actions. In turn order, players take turns taking one of the nine available actions. They're all shown on the player aid card. The first action is to terraform and build in an empty, non-native terrain within reach. Within reach includes being directly adjacent to a building you already have on the board, or connected to a bridge you have built. More on bridges later. It also includes skipping over river spaces depending on your sailing level. For example, this player's sailing value is one, as shown on the sailing track. This means they can skip one river space, so this space here is considered within reach. To terraform, each step away from the native terrain costs one spade. For example, to terraform a lake into a swamp will cost one spade, and a forest into a swamp will cost two. You have to take the shortest route around the wheel to your native terrain. You can terraform a space into steps, and you can terraform multiple spaces, but you can only build once. And you must always convert at least one space into your native terrain first before working on other spaces. Once terraformed, place a tile to change the land. Then the player may build their leftmost workshop by paying one tool and two coins to the supply. Place it on the terraformed tile. When building, other players who have buildings adjacent to your new building can gain power. Calculate the total power of all the buildings adjacent to the newly built building. For example, this yellow workshop was just built next to this red workshop and a red guild. The planning display will show the power level of the building on the right hand side. A workshop is one power and a guild is two. The red player can now gain that much power at the cost of a total amount of power minus one point. In this case, they can gain three power at the cost of two points. This is all or nothing, so they either gain three power and lose two points, or do nothing. However, if the player can't gain the full amount of power because they don't have enough in bowl two, they may gain all they can and lose one fewer point than the amount of power gained. The other side of this is you can't choose to lose points to go below zero. If you would, lose as many as you need to to go down to zero and then gain one more power than the number of points you lost. After building, check to see if you have formed a city. A city is made up of four adjacent buildings, not part of another city, with a total power value of at least seven. A city containing a university needs three buildings as shown with the symbol on the planning display. Take any one available city tile and gain the benefits on this tile which include points and resources. It also comes with a key to advance to level 8 on one of the science track. You need one key per track. Put it next to one of the buildings to show where the city is. Okay, that's the first action. It is the biggest of all of them. The second one is to upgrade a building. Pay the cost shown next to the building. Take the leftmost new building and return the replaced building to the rightmost space on the planning display. And adjacent players may now gain power in the same way as if a new building was built. Guilds have two costs. Pay the cheaper if built adjacent to another player's building and pay the higher cost if not. When building a palace, replace the placeholder with any available palace tile. These give the player income, abilities and bonuses. When building a school or university tile, take a competency tile from the innovation display. There is an outline of one of these under the school and university buildings on the planning display as a reminder. Again, these give the player income, abilities and bonuses. And you can gain multiple of these tiles, but you can't gain the same one more than once. Some competency and innovation tiles allow you to take neutral buildings. These are placed within reach on a native terrain when gained, and you can only terraform by spending tools. The terrain type the neutral building is on will show who owns it. They count as that building type but can't be upgraded and adjacent players will gain power when it's built as normal. For buildings not on the player board, the tile will show the power value. The third action is to increase sailing. Pay the cost shown on the planning display, move the token up one space and gain the covered reward, either books or points. And this will increase your reach down rivers as mentioned earlier. The fourth action is to upgrade terraforming. Pay the cost shown on the planning display, move the token up one space and gain the covered reward, either books or points. And this will make gaining spades for terraforming cheaper. 
The fifth action is to develop an innovation. Pay the cost in books under the innovation you wish to gain. Grey books are books of any colour. The coloured books are books of that specific colour. You also need to pay five coins if you have not yet built your palace. Place the innovation in the bottom most space on the right side of the planning display. The second and third spaces have an additional cost in books that need to be paid before gaining a tile. The sixth action is to send a scholar. Place a scholar from your available supply on any space at the bottom of the science track and move up that many spaces on that track. Scholars in those spaces will remain there for the rest of the game. If all the spaces are full or you just want to, you can send a scholar from your available supply and move up one space on any track. This of course means that that scholar will be available for you to gain again in the future. The seventh action is to take a power or book action. Pay the cost in power or books and cover that action with an X token. To pay the cost in books, simply return them to the supply. When spending power, which is shown with a black arrow, Move the required amount of power from bowl 3 back to bowl 1. Most of these action spaces are very similar to ones we've already covered, but there are two I want to look at specifically. The bridge action allows you to build from a riverbank adjacent to one of your buildings to a riverbank on the other side of the river. This directly connects the two spaces across the river. The spades allow you to terraform and build with that many spades, but you can still spend tools to increase the number of spades if required. The eighth action is to take a special action. Activate one of your available special actions and cover it with an X token. These can be found on your faction tile, innovation tiles, palace tile, round bonus tile and competency tiles. Okay, before we look at the ninth and final action which is to pass, there are a couple things I want to look at. Firstly, the left side of the round bonus tile awards points for performing the listed action in that round. For example, if this is the tile for the round, you'll gain two points for every spade you gain, no matter how you got it. In this round, you'll gain five points if you build your palace or university. The right side of the round bonus tile on round six also adds a building bonus in the same way. Also, players can convert resources on their turn before and or after taking their action. All the available conversions are shown on the planning display near the power bowls. You can spend power to gain scholars, books, tools or coins and can convert scholars into tools and tools into a coin. You can also convert a book into a coin. You can also remove a power token from bowl 2 from the game to move a power token from bowl 2 to bowl 3. There's a reminder of this on bowl 2. Okay, the ninth and final action is to pass, drop out the round and take no further actions. First, gain the bonus from your round bonus tile if it has the pass icon. The envelope with a red seal. For example, this round bonus tile gives you four points for each palace and university you have on the board. In round six, this is the only step you will perform when passing. Your game is now over. In rounds one to five, we have a couple more things to do. Take any of the three available round bonus tiles and any coins on it. Turn it face down to show you have passed and return your old one to the display face up. Then move the turn order token over to the topmost empty space on the other side of the track. When everyone has passed, we check the science bonus on the right side of the round tile. Gain the reward for each of the multiple of the values shown in the discipline track. For example, on this tile, for every two steps on the banking track, you gain a tool. So if you're on the fifth step, you gain two tools. Remove X tokens from all uncovered spaces so all actions are available for the next round. Place one coin on the three unused round bonus tiles, even if it has one already. Players fit their round bonus tiles face up. Flip the previous round score tile face down to show this round is over. Start a new round in the new turn order. In round six, after everyone has passed and gained the bonus from the round tile, the game ends. There are three extra ways to score points as shown above the round tracker. Area score, awarded to the player with the most number of buildings within reach of each other in a single connected group. For ties, add the points together for the tie positions and divide equally, rounded down. Science scoring. Score for the three highest markers on each track. Tires are scored in the same way. Finally, use resource conversion to convert all scholars, books and tools into coins and score one point for every five coins you have. The players with the most points wins and tied players will share victory. And that's how you play Age of Innovation. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video goes live. You can follow me on threads, Insta, Twitch and YouTube at Just of the Rogue and find the blog at JustOfTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka Just of the Rogue and I'll see you soon.